I'm a proud Pan-Africanist and I want to talk about a topic that has been at the heart of African development for decades, foreign aid. For years, developed nations and international institutions have poured billions of dollars into Africa. Yet we continue to see widespread poverty on the development and high dependency on foreign institutions and developed countries. Why hasn't this aid worked for Africa? Let's dive into this critical issue and uncover the double standard at play. Foreign aid was meant to be a lifeline, a way to uplift developing nations from poverty and help build a path to prosperity. According to the World Bank, over two trillions of dollars has been given to Africa in since 1960. But where has all this money gone to? Why are so many African nations still struggling to develop? In many African communities, despite decades of aid support from foreign institutions, basic infrastructures remain poor. Schools are underfunded, healthcare is inadequate, and clean water is still a luxurious commodity. First, rather for developed nations empowering African nations to develop independently, they are it often create a cycle of dependency. You see, African government becomes reliant on external funding to fund its basic services, reducing the incentive to develop their own economy. Let's take Nigeria for instance. The Nigeria government spend a significant amount of time and resources negotiating for its packages. These negotiations often divert attention from fostering local industries and innovation. Instead of investing in the manufacturing sector or agricultural innovation, the focus remains on securing the next stretches of aid. This reliance on aid undermines our sovereignty and sufficiency, perpetrating a cycle of high dependence on foreign institutions or foreign bodies. African government relies on external funding to fund basic services, undermine reducing the incentive to develop their own economy because of the conditionalities of it. Developed nations and international institutions impose policies and conditions that serve their own interests rather than those of the African countries. Let's take a look at Malawi as an instance. In the early 2000s, Malawi received aid from the International Monetary Fund under the condition that it liberalized its economy and cut down its public spending, which include the subsidy to farmers at that time. This policy brought about a widespread hunger and economic instability in Malawi. As many Malawis relied on this subsidy for their livelihood, this condition served the interests of the donor nations more than the needs of the Malawians. Thirdly, aid serves as a political tool. Foreign aid is frequently used to create political influence. Countries that align with political interests of the donor nations receive more aid, while those that don't align are left behind of the donation. Let's consider Egypt. Since the Camp David Accord, Egypt has been one of the Africa's largest recipients of US foreign aid, receiving billions annually in aid. And this aid is closely ties to Egypt's strategic alliance with the United States and its role in maintaining peace with Israel. Why countries that do not align with the US um, foreign policy like Zimbabwe under Mugabe have seen their aid drastically reduced or cut off entirely? This selective aid can destabilize regions and prop up regimes further entrenching poverty and conflict. Let's talk about the double standard in trade and economic policies. Developed nations preach free trade and open market economy, but often protect their own industries with subsidy and tariffs. For example, African farmers and manufacturers struggle to compete with heavily subsidized products from Europe and the United States. The European Union's common agricultural policies heavily subsidize European farmers, allowing them to sell their products at a lower price than the African farmers can afford. International institutions like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank also play a significant role in this dynamic. They promote structural adjustment programs that often lead to high cut in public expenditure on social services like healthcare and education. These austerity measures have devastating effects on the most vulnerable population in African countries. For example, in Ghana, the structural adjustment program in the late 80s led to privatization of state-owned enterprise and cut in social spending, which results in increase in poverty and social unrest. Another critical issue attached to foreign aid is corruption and mismanagement. Why this is not just unique to Africa alone, 
there are influx of foreign aid to Africa has often been mismanaged or siphoned by corrupt officials, failing to reach those who need it the most. In Kenya, for example, reports have revealed that large portion of aid intended for healthcare and education has been embezzled by government officials. Transparency International estimate that billions of dollars in aid have been lost to corruption, increasing the poverty rate and inequality. So, what is the way forward? How can Africa break from this cycle of dependency and chart its own path to development? First, we need to focus on building strong and self-sufficient economy. This means investing in local industry, agriculture and technology. We also need to support small and medium-sized enterprises by providing subsidy, export support based insurance and favorable tariffs. Small medium-sized enterprises can create jobs and stimulate economic growth from the ground up. Secondly, education and skill development are crucial. Empowering our youth with the skill they need to innovate and lead. It's essential for long-term prosperity. We also need to invest in our educational system and vocational training programs. And thirdly, we must harness our own resources sustainably and efficiently utilization. Africa is rich in natural resources and managing these resources responsibly, Africa can fund its own development project without relying on external aid. Breaking free from the cycle of foreign dependency, preventing regional cooperation is very, very vital. By working together, African nations can create stronger economic bloc and have better negotiation deal and support each other developmental projects. Organizations like the African Union and regional economy communities must play a more active role in promoting self-reliance and economic integration. Finally, we must change the narrative. Africa is not a continent in perpetual need of aid. We are rich in cultural resources and human potential. It is time for us to start telling our own story and take control of our destiny. African future lies in the ends of Africa. By rejecting the double standard and the paternalistic attitude of foreign aid, we can build a continent that stands strong and proud on its own times. Thanks for joining this conversation. Please, as Pan-Africanists, we believe in the strength and potential of our continent. Let's work together to create a better future.